sports. Hunting for dollars. A lot of them is what 30 golfers have gathered to do in San Antonio, Texas at the Nabisco Championships. The biggest prize in golf history is on the line, and right now, Tom Watson's in the lead. Yeah, money is uh, a lot, but uh, the game won't win again. Watson hasn't won in three years. In a sport where you drive for show and put your dough, Watson needed just 45 bucks. David Frost, first prize by the way, is at least $375,000. Without saying a word, come back whenever you want. Well, I went to Patterson this morning to... I don't want to know. What do you got there? Some more of that crap that wastes electricity? The last bill I paid almost killed me. Hey, don't worry about it. The only thing I've got over there is some tools and a change of clothes. And this afternoon, they brought another one of those electronic contraptions. My, my new computer? All right. Oh, yeah, hey. This is for you.
I want him captured. Now, calm down, Trevor. Do you know who it is? No, no, I don't know. But you can find him if you look for him now. I'm not looking for anybody. Just because somebody trespassed on your property doesn't give me license to start a manhunt. That lunatic has slit a pig's throat and put its head in my bed. She your favorite sow, Trevor? Were you kind of sweet on her? You son of a... Just like you to sit here and do nothing. Look, Trevor, I can't be checking pig pens and chicken coops every time some animal's slaughtered. Do whatever you want, but find that bastard who scared the hell out of my wife. That's what we pay you for. Now look, mister. You come into my office smelling like them hogs you hang around with. Wasting my time bitching about some pig who's got his throat slit. Here. Go call somebody who gives a shit. Come on. Come on. Gerald, stop playing with yourself. Come on, man, it's late. Keep your pants on. I'll be right out. Hey, yo, Rock. I'm leaving. Listen to this. Yesterday afternoon in Patterson, a woman was murdered. Slashed to pieces as she went through the tunnel of the car wash. How awful. Listen, I'm taking off with Richard. Uh, we'll grab a bite to eat on the way. Turn off those confounded machines that you always have on. Oh, yeah, if Mr. Broderick comes by, give him the radio and charge him 24 bucks. Hey. How do you like it? I hate it. So, why'd you buy it for me? Look, I didn't buy you anything. For every $200 that you spend at the May Company, they give you one of those attractive freebies. I love you, old man. Agenda today. Fleas, rats, ants, cockroaches. Today we are not exterminating any bugs. So what the hell am I doing here? How's that gorgeous nose of yours? Oh. About used to anything by now. Good, and let's go to Coogie's bar. What again? Yeah, Mike called last night and said there's some smell everywhere. It's no wonder with that guy they've got working in the kitchen. He smells like a sewer. Yeah, with that gorgeous blonde behind the bar. What, what was her name? Was it Teresa? No, no, it's uh, Maria. She's, She's gone. Great. Yeah, she was great that morning. I got this one, ready? Maria, a one, a two. A one, two, three, four. Maria, Maria. Maria, Maria. Are you a so sweeter? Are you a so sweeter? I like to play, play, play with your teeter. Play, play, play with your teeter. No, we're not going to need that. No, thing. Hey, I thought you weren't coming. No, no. Richard to the rescue. How you doing? Pretty good. That's a new sign, isn't it? Yeah, just last week. So, uh, where's the smell coming from? From the cellar. Well, let's go have a look at it. I'm sure it's not one of those fish sandwiches he ordered. <laughs> it could be. Anything's possible. <laughs> What? It smells like shit. <laughs> We've looked everywhere. We even looked in the eaves of the ceiling to see if there's a dead bird up there or something. Sometimes they make their nests up there. Wow, it might be a couple of rats trapped beneath the floorboards. Oh. Oh, you got a straw smell in here. Oh.
There's your steak. God, I can't stand the smell. What do you keep up here, Mike? We use it for storage. Storage of what shit? God. did a pretty good job of destroying what was left of her. Well, she picked a hell of a hiding place to hang herself, didn't she? Sam, did you talk to the owner here? Michael comes to the office. When did you last see her, Mike? About eight days ago. Marie West was a good worker. She moved in from Patterson a couple months ago. Sam, maybe you ought to find out where she worked in Patterson. Okay, boss. You know, Doc, this is the first suicide in this town since I made chief. I kind of hate to put that in the report, you know what I mean? It was a suicide, right? I don't know. Could be. What do you mean, could be? Let's wait for the report from the medical lab. Now, hold on, Doc. Now, look, Paddock has always been a quiet little town, except for a couple of fights now and then, and a couple of bikers making noise, right, Sam? Yeah, boss. Now, let's all respect Maria's desire to scream me, and let's not talk about this anymore. Doc. Go looking for trouble. You just sew her up and put her in the ground, okay? You, I want to see my office tomorrow morning. Right. Samuel, let's go. Come on, I gotta go get Laura's car. What? That's all you have to do is wreck your wife's car. Imagine what she's gonna have to say. No, well, it's always the same thing. Bitch, bitch, bitch. Every time we go out, I feel like a kid with his mother. Hey, how much older than you is she? Too much. Why I ever married her? I mean, she wasn't too fat or too thin or too short or too tall. Just too old. Well, you can say that again. She was just too old. <laughs> no, the beauty of Laura was in her bank accounts and her stocks. And once I got my greedy little hands on those, I was hooked. So she bought you a pickup truck so you could chase after cockroaches and fumigate rats. One of these days, I'm going to fumigate her. You can only help. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> See this girl coming here? That's Susan. That's Neb's older daughter. Oh, she's coming this way. Bodacious Tata. Hi. Are you looking for Laura Simmons? Yeah, you guessed it. <gasps> well, she's still out on the lake with my dad. If you like, I can bring you something to drink. Oh, that'd be very nice. Wouldn't that yeah. be very nice? We'd, uh, uh, like two. Oh. Two what? Two, uh... Beers? Two beers. Sure. Just a minute. <laughs> she is a fox, man. She is a real fox. Say what, do me a favor. What? Go have your beer someplace else. All right. Uh, my friend's staying in the car. Uh, he had an accident once, and he's, uh... Yeah. His right leg is made of plastic. I recognize Laura's car, but I didn't know she had a son. 
she doesn't. I'm her husband. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's okay. It happens all the time. We'll call it an accident. Uh, yeah. I know about that. That what? About your accident. My accident. Pretty good game. Thanks. I guess you might say I'm an expert at this. Oh, no, you made a lot of well, that was only because the joystick is loose. And besides that, the program misses two beats every fourth frame. Mind, I don't think you'd understand anyway. Are you from around here? Well, where do you think I'm from? The lake? No, you aren't the type. Oh, yeah, and what type is that? You know, a sea monster. I didn't know monsters had types. Do you think it's easy being a monster? work here in town? No, I, I just arrived here a few weeks ago. I'm staying over at old man Brock's place. Do you have a name? Lillian. Lillian. Uh, and, and you work here? Well, just in the summer to help my dad. And in the fall I go away to school. If you know so much about these games, then tell me why no one can beat you at this one. <laughs> I can beat you. Even on that one. All right, then let's play a game. Bet whatever you want, because you're going to lose. Whatever I want. All right. Go for it. Thank you. You're very welcome. You're also very beautiful. No. No, I mean that. I really do. I think you ought to consider moving to New York and doing some modeling work. Every girl's dream, right? Maybe yours. Call Jimmy. We've caught more than a dozen trout. Jimmy? Yeah. My dad needs you down on the dock. Oh. Susan, I'd like to do some fishing. Why don't you take me out and show me your favorite spots? It's not the right season for that. Well, see, you don't understand. Mm -hmm. The important thing is for you and I to go out on the boat together alone. That way, no one will know where we go. Mm -hmm. To fish. Mm -hmm. You want to go help your wife? Yeah. I saw you talking to Neb's daughter. She's a very nice girl. Hmm. I should have known. Well, don't start that shit again. What, I can't even talk to another woman without you getting upset? You haven't got a chance. Besides, your father would kill you. Right, well, speaking of Neb's, are you feeling a little guilty, Laura? Oh, come now. Well, Let's you were on a boat with him all day. What, you want an older man now? I'd rather not discuss this any further in front of your friend, okay? It's called Icarus. You can ask it anything you like. It's incredible. And not only does it follow instructions, but if it doesn't have the information you need in its memory logs, it automatically connects itself to a central terminal. You want a Coke? Yeah, thanks. Is it cold Coke? Yeah. Good. Oh, it's one I used before Icarus. Hey, it's an older model. Yeah, you can tell. But it looks a lot less complicated than Icarus over there. 
I think I'd like this one better. <laughs> I've got an idea. I could install this one in your house. Gerald, I didn't say that so you'd give me your computer. No, no, it just it just been laying around here getting rusty. You know, besides, these video games are a lot better than the ones in the arcades. They are. See, you can change the rules by typing in new commands. Could we communicate with each other whenever we wanted? Well, sure. Hey, I'll plug it into the central terminal. <laughs> Great. <laughs> I don't know if I can ask. I pose a question. Yeah, sure. Push the brown key. The brown key. Okay. Type in your question. Okay, don't look. Turn around. This is the brown key? Mm-hmm. Okay. You're not looking. Nope. Okay, I just ask the question. Don't look. Mm -hmm. Now what do I do? Uh, push answer. Answer. What color is answer? That's brown too. Okay, I found it, I found it. Okay, I pushed it. Uh, right, you just sit back and you wait for the computer to come. Wait a minute, what happened here? What, what is this? Now, what, 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 what did you ask it? You probably won't want to know. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it, it reads right here, data incomplete. What the hell did you ask it?
you can believe you scare me so much. Damn. I left my cigarettes in the bar. Do you have one? What's wrong with you? Why don't you answer? What are you doing? Without Inspector, the main office at railroad headquarters has every right to request a full report from us. Who was that woman? Her name was Rita Miller, 35 years old. She came over to Paddock almost a year ago. During the day, she worked over to Mrs. O'Brien's beauty parlor, and at night, according to the local gossip, she slept with almost anyone who paid her price. Hundred dollars. Hundred dollars? She wasn't cheap, was she? No, but she was worth it. Gee, you had some of it. No, no. My salary doesn't allow for such luxuries. <laughs> Chief, I'll take this to the office. All right, we'll dust it for prints. What shape was that body in? Hamburger meat. Yeah, maybe she tripped and fell on the wheels of the train. According to the driver of the train, this train did not run over anything. Mm -hmm. Anything at all. Look, maybe she was drunk or high on something and at night in the dark she tripped on the tracks and fell under that last car look McIntosh, those cuts were deep and clean they could not have been caused by the wheels of a train no way inspector you sure your imagination isn't getting the best of you <laughs> the owner of the bar said that uh reader received a call last night she left right afterwards now, so far that's all we got Look, I assure you, we'll investigate all the possibilities. But for now, in my report, it's going down as an accident. I'll notify you when we get the coroner's report. Let's go, Sam. You're the night here in this town. Something weird took place. They say that a woman died. No one knows why. what I call move. Yes, yeah, all right. But I'm going to take you out of my dad's boat, the Mach 2, then you'll really fly. Show me some of your favorite spots. Sure. <laughs> my dad took it out today. He's taking some woman fishing up on the north part of the lake. shop. They told me you were working here today. Oh, how are you, Frank? I'm okay. 
I'd like to ask you a few questions. All right. I guess you heard what happened to Rita Miller last night, huh? Yeah, the milkman's kid told me. Mm. Broderick, do you have a little something going on with Rita? Rita had your name and number in her phone book. Oh, shit. That dumb bitch loved to cause problems. Just because I slept with her once, she thought she could blackmail me. I paid her her money. $100, huh? That's right. So I told her not to come around the shop anymore because my wife was getting suspicious. I never saw her again, and I'm sorry about her accident. Yeah, that's the thing, Broderick. You see, it wasn't an accident. We found blood stains all over the ticket booth at the railroad station. Rita Miller was hacked to death with a sharp, wide-bladed instrument. Just like the one you got in your hand. I'll be talking to you, Broderick. I got some stuff for Lillian. Be careful, these things are heavy. Fucking boxes. This house was built by an architect who was crazy. Damn, the staircase sure is a pain in the ass. You know how many doors this place has? I have no idea. I think there's 29. I mean, you're not sure? There's always one door or one stair we're missing. Come on in. This is Miss Lillian's bedroom. down from the top of a lighthouse. That's why Miss Lillian chose this room. She says it makes her feel like a bird. <laughs> a little bird that loves electronic games. Oh, don't talk to me about those stupid machines. I always lose when I play with Miss Lillian. <laughs> and when you play by yourself? I still lose. <laughs>
Access to menu two. No access. What's happening, Gerald? When are we going to start? No access. Gerald, are you home? No access. Gerald Martin's file. Crimes. Myrna Dobson, 31 years old, dead in the car wash, city of Patterson. Mary West, 25 years old, city of Patterson, on the way to Paddock. Vita Miller, 29 years old, dead under the railroad bridge at Paddock Station. Sam, looks like we got a ugly situation developing here. Pretty soon gonna be a whole bunch of nosy people coming around here. There's some newspaper men from Patterson here already. Shit. They don't waste much time, do they? Why do they always think they know more than the police? Leads the shit out of me. My mother died when I was eight years old. Well, what did your father do with you and Susan? He sent us to a boarding school in Cavendish. But I didn't last there too long. How come? Uh, teenage problems. I guess I played sick so many times that I really started to feel sick. So they sent me home and put me under medical supervision. Then one day my dad came in and he said he never wanted to see another doctor in the house again. So I stopped taking all the pills and the medications. <laughs> That's good. My dad was the best doctor I ever had. We became really close during that time. And I'm sure that if Mama was still alive, I'd probably love him more than her. Who do you like better, your mother or your father? I don't want to talk about my parents. I, I don't feel anything for them. You don't love them? I don't love or hate them. They just taught me how to be independent, that's all. I feel sorry for you. Oh, come on. Don't worry about me. I mean, we've all got problems, right? Hey, what's that? This? Yeah. This is the Yari Bay symbol. <laughs> A whole bunch of them. Do you want it? <laughs> oh boy! Now it looked just like Chief McIntosh with his name tag. <laughs> Gerald, why do you have the names of all the women who were killed in your computer file? I've also got a list of all the automobile accidents and forest fires in California. Don't you like statistics? Hi, Lillian. Hi, Father. Are you coming to rehearsal tonight? Yes, sir. Good. Father Clinton. Gerald. Gerald. Father Clinton. Hi, Father. Gerald. I'll see you rehearsal. Okay. Thanks. Come on. Let's go. Don't you want to finish our coats? No. Goodbye, Father. Goodbye, Lillian.
got to get back to work. Marine Adams. Um, she worked in some psychiatric clinic. Now this is getting weird. How are things going with Laura? Every day it gets worse. I think she's having an affair with Nebs. <laughs> yeah, but you just keep on hanging on. What do you want me to do, kill her? Oh, why bother? Just talk it over with the axe killer. I think he'd be happy to take care of it for you. It's not very funny. I guess it is. We're going to get together tomorrow, aren't we? No, I got to go out of town and do a fumigation job. <laughs> Kill some bugs for me. Mrs. O'Brien owes two months. What about that jerk in the gasoline station? Mm. You mean Bob Dallas? Mm. He says he's not going to pay. Well, everything here is pretty much in order. With everything that's happening around here, I get a lump in my throat when I cross the alley to go to my house. And it's always been so peaceful in this town. We've only got two policemen. We've never needed them until now. I can't believe they haven't found that maniac yet. What I can't believe is that they haven't arrested Joe Nance. They haven't got any evidence against him. <sighs> Didn't you know that his name was in the address book of that woman who was found murdered on the train tracks? Oh, come on. The name of every man in town was in that address book. But it was Nibs who took that Taurus woman in his boat to South Shore. That's true. And it was Nibs who was the last one who saw her alive. At this time, the population of Yere Bay Valley and Paddock nervously await the outcome of a police search. A series of brutal murders have been committed in the area by what appears to be a madman. And now, general news. A tropical storm designated Emily brushed the...
I don't want to play tonight. Why not? I'm depressed and I have a headache. What's wrong? I'm scared. Scared of what? I have to talk to you tonight. Can you come over? Wait for me at... So what's wrong? I don't know. You mean you don't want to tell me? It's not that. It's just that I don't know how to explain it to you. Try. Something that happened years ago. When I was playing with Charlie. Who's Charlie? My cousin. He used to come over all the time. We were about ten. And one day we were playing in the yard and Charlie got onto the swing. Right. So Charlie gets on the swing. Then what? And I started to push him. And he yelled at me telling me to stop, but I didn't. I I just kept pushing him harder and harder. You know, I can just see your cousin flying through the air. Yeah. He fell off the swing and fractured his skull. They tell me he's still in a hospital. It's been six years and I'm still trying to get my father and my uncle to tell me something about him. Are you afraid of him? The other night, I asked my computer to check the hospitals to find my cousin. There was only one Nibs. And they released him from a mental hospital two years ago in Patterson. So he, he's recovered. He's normal now. That's not what bothers me. What does then? The other night I had a dream. And Charlie was walking towards me smiling. And that scared you? He was carrying a bloodstained axe. And he said he was going to kill me. something yeah father I hear the choir gets better and better every week that you're doing oh I choose the pieces we play and Kaplan does the arrangements who Christopher Kaplan Christopher Kaplan he just moved to Patterson he was just here rehearsing a minute ago he collaborates with Mrs. Bixby on the arrangements Mrs. Bixby that's what I've come to talk to you about. Was she at the rehearsal last night? No. Maybe she was sick. She gets migraines. Maybe this evening she'll... No, sir. She won't be coming this evening. Or tomorrow. Mrs. Bixby's been killed. 
A neighbor found her body a couple of hours ago. We think it happened last night. Mrs. Bixby, dead? I'm sorry I'm the one that had to bring the bad news to you. night. Uh, the last minute I had to go in Palmdale to repair some video games. Like a dummy, I waited in front of the screen. What was the matter? Do I look like I need help? I don't know. I think you should take back your computer. Why? I think it's making our friendship too dependent on machines. Well, look, if I'm boring you with You're all You're not my boring me. I like you a lot, Gerald. It's just that you seem so... Just what? You seem so mysterious. <laughs> well, we've only known each other a few days. It seems like a lot longer to me. That's why I trust you. Hmm. Well, why shouldn't you? Hmm? Oh, fine! <laughs> I should push it till you fall off this thing. All right, go ahead, try it. I'm going to push you till you end up in the trees with the first. What's the matter? I called you Charlie. That's all right. I've called you by a different name. Let's go, okay? Can I drop you someplace? You got rehearsal today. Maybe at the chapel? No, just take me home. My father's probably at home. He'll be expecting me. He hasn't met you yet, has he? It's probably better that way. I mean, people don't take to me very well. You should cut your hair just a little bit right here. Are you ready? Gerald, how did you get the scar? It was a motorcycle accident. It happened a couple of years ago. Hold on tight. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? <laughs> when it started raining outside. So I let me red get out of the rain. Um, Brock let me in and he told me I could wait for you inside. 
but he left. Brock likes to play poker on Monday nights with his pals. God, you're so wet. So are you. Are you cold? Kind of. Yeah. Let me see if I can get you some dry clothes. You can dry yourself off. Seat these to a I'll make us up some hot coffee. information were you looking for in the computer? I was looking for some information on the University of Portland. What kind of information? Well, my girlfriend Lisa, she lives in Portland, and she said that there might be some openings in medical school for next year. But did you find out what you wanted? No. The information wasn't available. Brian Carpenter, psychiatrist, St. John's Hospital, Santa Monica, California. You haven't told me the truth. Well, I guess you caught me. I'm sorry, Gerald. I just didn't feel like getting into it right now. What exactly are you looking for? I was looking for some information on Charlie. Because I asked my father about him again today. And what did he say? He said that he died. But I know it's not true. Charlie is alive, and I've got a feeling that a lot of what's going on around here has to do with him. Why do you say that? Well, for one reason, almost all the women who had been killed, they had worked in a psychiatric ward. Don't you find that odd? It stopped raining. I better take you home. Gerald, I saw a list of doctors and nurses who had worked in a psychiatric ward. The name of one of the doctors was Dr. Philip Martin. Is that your father? Come on, let's go. Gerald, you haven't answered me. Is Dr. Philip Martin your father? Philip Martin married my mother two years after my father died. in those investments was sheer suicide. I warned you twice about the tremendous risk. What's my balance? I'm afraid so, Mrs. Simmons. Bankers can cause more trouble than the money itself. I've lost everything. Don't be depressed. You're still a very beautiful woman. Now I'm poor. 
before. Money is never. Everybody will turn their back on me, including Richard. He won't be staying around long when he finds out about this. Christopher? Cockroaches to kill today? Laura's disappeared. What do you mean? She's gone. Are you sure she's not back at the lake house? Yeah, I just came from there. Nobody's seen her. She didn't sleep at the house last night. A suitcase and some of her things are missing. All right, so she left you. I mean, you're going to leave her anyway. 
divorce. You said you were sick of her. Well, you don't understand. You see, if she left with somebody else, I don't consider it adultery. It's robbery. I just came back from the bank and there's not a cent in our account. I mean, she disappeared with everything, including the car. <clears throat> Come on, come on, man. Let's go to Grace's have a couple of beers. No, I can't. Uh, I've got a date with Lillian. Her father's in Patterson with Susan. You know, you're spending too much time with this girl and those stupid games that you play. You know, you're going to get in trouble and you're going to have microchips for brains. Gerald. Have fun tonight. Safe sex. Yes, Mr. Nebs? Now I can hear you better. Were you saying you were still in Patterson? Yeah, we'll be arriving late, and I don't want Lillian going home alone. Could you please ask the Morgans if they can take Lillian home? I think they've already left. But don't worry. I'll take her. Thanks a lot. Hold on. I'll call your daughter. found the bodies of a man and a woman in the woods along the road to the bridge. The woman's been identified as Mary Simmons. No, it can't be true. The man has no ID. We don't recognize him. The chief thinks she might be able to help us out. We found this in his pocket. Okay, Daddy. Well, don't worry. Jimmy will be with me. Oh, Dad, I gotta go. They're turning the lights out. I love you too. Okay, I'll see you. Bye. Hi, Matilda. Where's Father Clinton? He had to go with the inspector. He said that you should wait here for him. He'll be back in half an hour. Okay, thanks. Right. What are you doing out here all by yourself? I'm waiting for Father Clinton to pick me up. Oh, come on, I'll drop you off. Are you sure? Sure. It'd be great. Okay, thanks. Sure. Who found the body? Jim did. He's the black fellow who works over at the Nibs place. You recognize this man, Father? Yes. It's Christopher Kaplan, the music professor. I was afraid of that. Well, now you got two more, Doc. I'll take care of the bodies, Frank. Tomorrow I'll give you my reports. Boy, this is some son of a... 
sorry for that. Seven killings in the past two weeks. Six women and now a man. I tell you, this place stinks of death. It's really macabre. Yeah, that's a word for it. Thank you, Father. We won't keep you anymore. My deputy will run you back to the chapel. It's not necessary. I'll take the shortcut and get there faster on foot. Well, be careful. I won't be alone. Here, boss. We found this under a body. Yari Bay. It's one of those pins those kids wear that work at the Neb's place. This is worth checking. All right, on the way back to town, we'll stop at the Neb's house.
Charlie? Charlie, is that you? I'm not Charlie. Charlie doesn't exist. You invented him. You're Charlie. What? No! God, no! I'm not Charlie, no! Stay away from me. No. Now, you've got to listen to me, Lillian. Nobody in town knows about your medical history. It's a well-kept secret. Listen to me. I finally figured out the truth. You gave me a clue when you borrowed my computer to check out names. A last name for somebody with a last name, Nebs. Listen to Patterson. That's where you were. Come on. Here, look! Oh! Lillian Nebs was admitted to the psychiatric ward at the age of eight. She fell from the swing and suffered psychoamnesia. Please let go of me! No, no look! You gotta know everything! No! Look! Diagnosis? Cranial encephalitis. Traumatic. Oh, no. Lillian Nibs, diagnosis, cute psychopath. And then at the sanitarium, during your recovery period, you see, that's where Charlie was born. Charlie. Yes. See, you need to destroy your past or you, you invented something to help you. Shut up! You don't know what you're talking about! Oh, no! Look at this! Sarah Elliott, psychiatrist killed her because she was the one that committed you to the mental hospital. Oh, Myrna Dobson, traumatologist. She was your doctor in Cavendish. <laughs> Marie West, waitress. Uh, Catherine Trevor, nurse. She was a nurse assigned to you. Marine Adams, encephalogram specialist. No. Rita Miller, hairdresser. You killed this one because she slept with your father. No, I didn't kill her! No, look at this, Laura Simmons, artist. And this one because she wanted to marry your father, Anna Bixby. Don't you see? You are Charlie. It'll all come together for you soon. When it's not so threatening. What? We can start all over again. Without Charlie. Without dead people. Do you understand me? Don't worry, Lillian. Everything's going to be all right. And soon you're going to be cured. And this time, I mean really cured. I love you, Lillian. I love you. I can't! Let go of me! You hate me like you hold the others. You're Charlie! What are you talking about? Now put that thing down. You're sick. You need help. I'll help you. Murder! Stop it, Lillian! I'm not Charlie! I thought you are! God's sake, stop it! Oh. It's me, Gerald. Try to think. Come on now!
be all right. The nightmare's over. There'll be no more murders in this town. Hey, 